several Final Fantasy games have been updated and remade before. Final Fantasy 1 has been released countless times, Final Fantasy Adventure has three different remakes, the 10, 10 2 remaster had to be completely rebuilt, but this, this is different. It all started with a PS3 tech demo. A tech demo that scratched an itch that Final Fantasy fans had had for well over a decade. By 2005, when the PS3 demo was released, Final Fantasy VII was well on its way to becoming its own sub-series in the franchise. One that still hasn't been touched by any other entry when it comes to sheer cultural significance. As the series became more popular, that itch persisted and eventually, morphed into something more. All of this eventually came to a head at E3 2015, where a teaser trailer announcing the Final Fantasy VII Remake was released, mirroring the original tech demo which was announced 10 years beforehand. Eventually, that trailer would become a trilogy of remakes, the first of which would be directed by Tetsuya Nomura, the love him or hate a mastermind behind the majority of Final Fantasy character designs, as well as Kingdom Hearts, the best video game franchise. It took a lot of time in hard drive space to make the video that you're watching right now, and that's because, after completing it twice this year, Final Fantasy VII Remake is not only one of my favorite Final Fantasy games, but one of the best JRPGs I've ever laid my grubby little hands on. Visually, the game is stunning. Even the original PS4 release looks great. There's a sense of scale that's unmatched when it comes to this game's Midgar and all of its different sectors. The art direction is just fantastic. Just looking at the concept art come to life in Unreal Engine makes for a beautiful experience, regardless of whether you're in the messier Sector 5 or if you're on the more pristine looking upper plate. So for all this work put into this game's visuals to be stifled on PC due to a dynamic resolution that you can't turn off at all, constant frame rate stuttering, low poly textures, and texture loading issues is a bit of a disappointment, but it doesn't detract from the game too much. It is a bit ironic considering that the remake took about a year and a half for the PlayStation exclusive game to be playable on PC, which is a similar time span that it took the original Final Fantasy VII to come to PC. I had no other place to mention this, but I didn't want to cut it because it's a really interesting tidbit of information to me. So I'm putting it right here. Final Fantasy is known for a lot of things. One of the most recognizable parts of the series is the music, which is somehow consistently amazing regardless of the composer. Although, the overwhelming majority of fan-favorite tracks were created by Nobu Uematsu, who stuck with the series since its conception. The original Final Fantasy VII soundtrack is... One of the best video game OSTs I've ever heard in my entire life, Masashi Hamauzu, Mitsuto Suzuki, as well as Nobu Uematsu, remixed motifs from the original soundtrack in such a way that keeps it fresh while still maintaining the blood of Final Fantasy VII coursing through its veins, which feels thematically fulfilling and ironic in a way. The reprise of Jessie's theme during her death is just so... Fucking somber. I'm actually, I'm dead ass fucking, like, I'm, I'm getting emotional thinking about it. This game's interpretation of One Winged Angel is cinematic, amazing, and just all around a great track for the final boss. Call it a recency biased, but I think it's almost as good as the original track? Then there's the song Hollow by Yosh, which is completely exclusive to the remake. Regardless of whether you're listening to the instrumental version that plays in Sector 5, or the one with Yosh's lyrics at the very end of the game, the track has a certain melancholic happiness to it that can only really be captured in a Tetsuya Nomura game. His stories often end with a bittersweet vibe in a song that perfectly captures that feeling, and I'm happy to report that Final Fantasy VII Remake is no different. But let's put a pin in that for now. Before this game, the most recent mainline Final Fantasy was 15, and despite loving the shit out of it, 15 was a culture shock to most fans and is often cited as a terrible game for many reasons that I'll get into in another video on another day. The reason I bring it up is because 7 Remake takes a lot of what I liked about 15 and puts it into a game that's more in line with what people expect from the series, with some Advent Children level Nomura flair just to be safe. Like most modern games in the series, this is an action RPG. 
Although there's still some roots from its turn-based original. You can attack as much as you want, but in order to heal or use any abilities, you still need to wait for the ATB bar to fill up. Initially, as somebody who's never played the older games, this felt like a needless mechanic to carry over, but in my second playthrough on normal, I began to see the ATB bar as something there to keep players thinking strategically to know when to pull back from a fight and block with the trade-off that the bar stops recharging, or to attack, allowing the bar to fill quicker. You can even parry attacks automatically in Punisher mode, which instantly fills the ATB bar. It's very difficult to get me to care about a parry system because I'm very much a caveman when it comes to these games. The equipment system, honestly, has to be one of the best I've seen in an RPG. Oftentimes, you could just coast through a game, relying on the same weapons for significant portions of a playthrough, and only switching things up when there's a major boss fight or something. But, each and every weapon in Remake has a different style of combat, as well as a unique ability that each character can learn, if you level it up enough. The heavy emphasis on teamwork mixed with the constant acquisition of new or improved materia and weapons keeps each party member's loadout in a persistent state of flux. There's some little touches added to this game that just make it feel so good to play. When you go into the commands menu, you can hold L1 if you need to use an item or skill multiple times. You can save at any point in this game. You'd be surprised to see modern RPGs that still don't fucking do this. But even better than that is the screen going red when any of your characters are low on health and the game doesn't fail you when Cloud is down. The latter is probably the biggest grievance I've personally had with Japanese role-playing games. These two seemingly small gameplay improvements make the other members of your team feel just as important as he is, which completely goes against Cloud's rough, needlessly macho attitude towards Tifa, Aerith, and Barret during combat. He tries so hard to be the main character, only for the game itself to emphasize that they're all important as members of the team. Outside of combat, Final Fantasy VII Remake has a lot of places to explore. This game has kind of become infamous for taking a 8-9 to nine hour section of the original game and stretching it out to a 30-40 to 40 hour RPG. It does this by taking parts of the original game and turning them into something more fleshed out. A significant portion of these moments are in the story, but the overwhelming majority of these additions are in gameplay. On top of being able to explore Midgar, there's a decent amount of side quests. They're fun, short, and often function as a nice distraction from the main story. Whether it be Chocobo Sam's Chocobos running after the plate falls, or Tifa competing in a pull-up competition. Can't forget about the hand massage. Let's see if we can't improve your circulation. Get that blood flowing. God, I hope nobody walks in. Sometimes the game can take this a little bit too far. One matte painting of mechanical arms becomes a completely original puzzle that just takes too long due to the animations. It even makes completely new sections of the game up, like the sun lamps before Reactor 5. Don't even get me started on the Uncharted Tomb Raider Tifa section. Oh my god. Gosh. However, the worst of these, hands down, is Hojo's Lab, or the drum, which is easily my least favorite section of this entire game. Throughout its runtime, Seven Remake does its best to balance story and gameplay enough to keep the player interested. Cinematic walking sections or puzzles are spliced in between boss fights, bike rides, and character development. The drum has none of that. I don't think I need to emphasize how fucking terrible of a name that is. It's a completely original area to the remake that comes right after some key story moments. Aerith talks about her childhood, Cloud's past comes into question, and Sephiroth is confirmed to be alive. And after this fucking slog is where the amazing final hour of this game takes place, making this the calm before the storm. Which is fine. By this point, we've had plenty of low energy moments to allow the player to breathe and or get excited for what's next. However, the entire section in between these two parts of the game that is the drum adds nothing of value. It's been well established that Hojo is a psychotic asshole, both through his experiments as well as threatening to have Aerith impregnated by soldiers. I... What the fuck? <clears throat> My point is that this offers nothing new to the story, and in terms of gameplay, there's a new enemy type introduced, but you're still just clearing out rooms of enemies. The big mechanic that sets this part aside from the rest of the game is that you switch in between the pairings of Cloud and Barret, or Tifa and Aerith. But the way it's done is so 
purposefully slow. If you haven't noticed, I think that this entire section is just padding. And it's worse than most padding in the game, since it purposefully finds ways for you to waste more time. Slow walking, backtracking, by the end, it's just well over an hour of wasted time. I should note that the stuff that I don't like, whether it be the drum or other padded sections of the game, isn't prevalent or even bothersome enough to affect my enjoyment and sheer glee when playing through Final Fantasy VII Remake. The game often criticizes the player's participation, or lack thereof. After Jessie's bike ride, she either compliments or criticizes your driving. Even smaller dialogue decisions change whether you get closer to Tifa or Aerith. There's a surprising amount of these events that are altered depending on the player's choices, like Tifa Aerith and Cloud's dresses during the wall market section are all determined by dialogue options or whether or not you completed side quests. There's a date system, like in the original game, but here, depending on who you're closer to, whether that be Tifa, Aerith, or Barret, will wait for Cloud in Aerith's garden near the latter half of the game and have a heart-to-heart. -heart. There's even some that alter gameplay, like taking the stairs as opposed to the elevator in the Shinra building, which was hands down the funniest fucking part of this game. Like, I found it completely on accident on my second playthrough, and I'm so glad. Personally, I fought alongside Tifa and Aerith in the final battle, battle, got Tifa's resolution scene in the garden, and got the shittiest dresses for Aerith and Cloud in both playthroughs. All of these little idiosyncrasies show just how much work was put into 7 Remake, despite it obviously being the opening act to a larger story. Replaying this game really goes to show that the overwhelmingly positive reception wasn't just diehard fans hyping it up for years. Tetsuya Nomura, Motomu Toriyama, and Naoki Hamaguchi hit this game out of the fucking park. For the most part, the first 28-ish hours is a beat-for-beat -beat remake of the original game's introduction. Cloud is hired by an eco-terrorist group named Avalanche to blow up reactors that belonged to his previous employer Shinra, and all of you know how this goes by now. Aerith is an ancient, Sephiroth is a madman, and we gotta team up to beat the thing. However, much like every other part of the game, there's enough added story to make a remake its own thing. One of the most notable is the amount of character development given to not just the party members, but even side characters. Remake is able to take, frankly, inconsequential side characters like Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse, and turn them into members of the main party that are so fleshed out that the character cares whether they live or die. It's kind of obvious in the original that these guys are just cannon fodder in order to set the stage for the rest of the game's ruthlessness, but here, they're really treated as integral parts of the team. So, when Jesse gets some <clears throat> eternal rest, it feels really sad, even for somebody who knew that she dies going into this game. But now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Final Fantasy VII Remake is not a complete remake of the original game. It's technically a sequel to the original Final Fantasy VII. If you somehow ignored the spoiler warnings, um, boo fucking who, you're, you're too far in now, buddy. However, the game still manages to be a faithful recreation of the original game, somehow. Personally, when I played through the remake earlier this year on PS4, I had somehow avoided spoilers for the past two years. I know, it's a fucking Christmas miracle. So, when I got to the end, and the whispers were revealed to be fate itself, trying to get the remake timeline closer to the original games, I was completely floored. I, I did not see that coming whatsoever. I'd never played Final Fantasy VII before, but I knew of it. Everyone knows of Final Fantasy VII, its most infamous scene, and its big twist. So when that twist was basically revealed so early into the story, when that moment flashed during the second to last boss fight, and when Zack fucking Fair showed up before the Sephiroth fight, I knew that Square tried something a bit out of their comfort zone, at least for Final Fantasy's sake. Obviously, this ending relies on your understanding of the original Final Fantasy VII. You have to know who Zack Fair is, who dies in the original game, as well as how it ends. Understanding I still don't have because I didn't get the memo. However, that doesn't make it any less enjoyable. 7 Remake is able to teeter the line of being more experimental as a small piece in the never-ending machine that is the Final Fantasy VII compilation, as well as being its own semi-complete story. And the ending is no different. As a matter of fact, replaying the game with the twist in mind makes me like it and this new interpretation a lot more. Unlike the original, Final Fantasy VII Remake sets up Cloud as an unreliable narrator from the very beginning. Like in the original game, Cloud has flashes of memories from the past, but they're more frequent. 
And as we get closer and closer to the end of the story, his mental state begins to deteriorate, which sets up the Zack twist of the original game. The knowledge of where this trilogy is going recontextualizes certain dialogue, like Yosha's Hollow, whose lyrics are from Cloud's perspective, and can be interpreted to be about Tifa, Aerith, or Zack. But that's just the stuff we know. There's, there's so much stuff that this game leaves on the fucking table. What did Aerith show Marlene in Seventh Heaven? Why do Sephiroth and Aerith know about the original timeline? What's the deal with the cloaked men? Is Wedge alive or did the Whispers kill him to preserve the timeline? Jesse and Big seem to be alive, but are they alive in the main timeline? Is this the Sephiroth from the original game and that explains why he knows everything? Is the timeline where Zack is alive adjacent to the remake? I'm pretty sure that the sequel, Rebirth, would be a lot more straightforward and follow the logic of the original game. But as a Kingdom Hearts fan, I can't help but recognize the similarities in the more direction, both in gameplay and the narrative. The ending leaves fans with just enough pieces to be invested and come up with their own theories, while he probably fucks off to make some more spin-off games. However, I'd be lying if I said that part of me didn't want Final Fantasy VII Remake to be a complete one-to-one -one interpretation of the original game, just as an action RPG. Maybe this game is a subtle critique of the concept of remaking something that already exists, with the whispers functioning as overly critical fans who want everything to happen the way that they want it to, but then again, Again, I'm an Evangelion fan, so maybe I'm reading a little bit too much into all this. Final Fantasy VII Remake is beautiful. It's a mostly faithful remake that expands on the original in ways fans in 1997 could have never dreamed of. It ends up becoming a faithful remake that's also its own thing, and it opens the door for the following installments to wow players in their very own way. I want to clarify that I got into Final Fantasy through Type 0 and 15, which are some of my favorite installments in the franchise. And the third game I jumped into was the first six hours of Crisis Core. Not because I knew who Zack was or because I wanted to see Gact of all people in a Final Fantasy game, but because all three games were made by the same director, Hajime Tabata. And although I liked Crisis Core, I didn't care about Final Fantasy VII one fucking bit. It took this game this RPG for me to understand. 7 Remake made me care about Final Fantasy 7, want to play the entire compilation. Even if that means watching Advent Children in Last Order, or even playing Dirge of Cerberus. Do you know how good this game is to make me want to play Dirge of fucking Cerberus? Needless to say, come 2024, if I have a PS5, I'll be there for Rebirth Day 1. I want to say thank you to everyone watching this video. Um, this took a really, really fucking long time. Uh, I've been talking about this video both uh, in my YouTube videos as well as in my personal life for a very, very long time. And it took a fat minute to record this because uh, I was just so intimidated by even talking about this game. But now that it's done and over with, it feels like a gigantic weight has been lifted off my shoulders. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and all that jazz. I'll catch you guys next time. Later, kids. Have a good night. それまでのゲームが全部古くなったその瞬間をみんなが体験したんだその体験がまたやってくるファイナルファンタジー7リメイク